Hey guys, and welcome to one of our Backtable videos. My name is Chris Beck, and I'll be your host today. Our topic will be gastrostomy tubes. I'll be walking you through a very straightforward placement of a push-type gastrostomy tube. We're trying something new with this video. I hope you guys enjoy it. As always, feel free to send us your feedback either on the Backtable website, our YouTube channel, or social media platforms like Twitter. There are lots of ways to hit us up at this point. Now let's get into it. Our patient is a 55-year-old female with head and neck squamous cell carcinoma. The patient was a referral from radiation oncology for G-tube placement. At this point, she had already been seen by OMSF and had undergone a partial maxillectomy with plans to start radiation treatment in the near future. She has no history of prior gastric surgeries or radiation treatment to the abdomen. During my clinic visits, I do a fair amount of counseling with these patients. I spend time discussing the procedure and probably more time discussing things to expect moving forward after the procedure. Also during the clinic visit, I'll provide the patient with a bottle of barium nectar. I think the volume is 400 milliliters. I will ask the patient to drink the contrast the day before the procedure, preferably earlier in the day. Here's a shot of the outside packaging to the tea fasteners that I use. Here we have the actual tea fasteners out of the packaging and on the back table. Three come in a set. As you'll see, I typically only use two T-tacks for G2 placement, but it's helpful to have an extra. Things will happen like misdeployment or you drop one on the floor. This is the Inuit gastrostomy tube placement set opened up on the back table. Don't sweat the details of my equipment. For those who are interested, I'll provide a list of everything I use for this procedure in my show notes. And for trainees, just remember that there are a lot of different ways and sets of equipment for placing a G-tube. This is just my way. The set that's shown here comes in different sizes, small, medium, and large. This is the medium size kit. The wire is a 100 centimeter super stiff amplatz. It comes with two dilators, which have a nice smooth taper. Both those dilators have a hydrophilic coating. There are two peel away sheaths, 18 and 20 French. I'll use the 20 French peel away sheath, which will accommodate a standard 16 French G-tube. Now let's get into the actual procedure. This is my scout AP view of the abdomen before we've really gotten started. Here are a couple things to notice. First, contrast outlines the colon. As I mentioned, I'll have my patients drink barium the day before the procedure. I like having the colon opacified with contrast. Some IRs will say it's not critical, but for me, certainly makes things easier. Second thing is the NG tube coming in from the top of the screen. Either myself or my nurse will place a five French angle tapered glide cath into the stomach before we get started. This will allow us to distend the stomach with air before we start placing our tea fasteners. Now we've inflated the stomach. Before we do this, I'll have the nurse administer one to two milliliters of glucagon. This will reduce bowel peristalsis and help keep the air we inject in the stomach. To inject the air, the nurse or the cath lab tech will take a 60 ml syringe, fill it with air, and hook up to the NG tube via a three-way stopcock. Then they'll keep injecting air while I'm periodically checking the abdomen with fluoro. I'm not prescriptive with the volume of air, I just want to see the stomach adequately distended. After the stomach is adequately distended, I'll check liver margins. I'll use an ultrasound, which is prepped and ready to go in the field to identify the margins of the liver. Then I'll make a few lines on the patient's skin using a sterile marker. Next, using a pair of hemostats like the ones you see in the still shot, I'll place them on the patient's abdomen to approximate the skin entry locations for the two T-fasteners and the gastrostomy tube. The two finger holes will mark the location of the T-tacks, and the space in between the finger holes marks the G-tube insertion site. With the hemostats in this position, I'll administer lidocaine along all three tracks. After lidocaine, I'll make all three dermatotomies. Then I'll use the hemostats to dissect down into the incision reserved for the G-tube. This is just something that I do that results in some economy of movement and makes my procedure a little bit more efficient. My IR partner, Dr. John Beck, showed me this, so now I'm showing it to you guys. This is a picture of me placing the first TDAC fastener. As you can see, the needle is directed at the stomach with a barrel on end appearance. This helps me know that the needle is on target and headed directly for the stomach. The colon is clearly out of the path of the T-tac. I'd like you to notice the setup I have for seating the T-tac in the soft tissue. The T-fastener is connected to a short piece of tubing hooked up to a half-filled syringe. This setup helps me keep my hands outside the field of view while I'm trying to get the right trajectory of the needle before I actually advance it into the stomach. As you'll see in a second, 
I seat the needle in the AP projection, but actually advance the needle into the stomach using an REO projection. This is what my setup looks like while I'm seating the needle in the AP projection. Also, see how the syringe is half filled with contrast? This allows me to aspirate air once I puncture the gastric wall. After I aspirate air, I'll inject contrast into the gastric lumen to confirm positioning. What we have here is a slow motion clip of me placing the first T-fastener. At this point, I've already seated the T-tac a few centimeters into the soft tissue while in the AP plane. After seating the needle, I rotate the II away from me to be in the REO projection, which is the view that you see now. I'll position the II so that the tip of the needle is at the periphery of the screen. This just helps me keep my hands outside the field of view. Slowly, I'll advance the needle until I begin to see the gastric wall tinting. In this clip, if you look carefully at the needle tip, you can see the gastric wall tint. After I tint the wall of the stomach, I'll make a short and quick advance of the needle to get into the stomach lumen. Once I see and feel the needle pierce the gastric wall, I'll aspirate air and then inject contrast to check positioning. This is a still shot in the AP projection after I've injected contrast through the T-TAC needle. You can see contrast outlining the rugal folds along the stomach. As you can see here, the first T-fastener has already been deployed, and now I am seating the second T-TAC in the AP plane. I'm trying to get that same barrel on end appearance of the needle before I advance further in the RAO trajectory. This is a slow motion video clip of me advancing the second needle into the gastric lumen. If you wait a few seconds, I'll show you what it looks like in real time speed. After I advance the needle into the gastric lumen, I aspirate air and then inject contrast to confirm positioning. At this point in the procedure, both the T-TACs have been deployed and we're now ready to begin placing the gastrostomy tube. This is a still shot in the AP projection with my 18 gauge needle in place and ready to advance forward for the gastrostomy tube. I'm splitting the difference between the two T-TACs for placement. I'm also trying to position my needle so that it is equidistant between the greater and lesser curvatures of the stomach. I also direct my needle slightly laterally. I do this in the event I need to convert to a GJ tube later on. I find that this slight lateral drift makes for an easier conversion if it comes up. Not mission critical, just my personal preference. Here's a picture of my wire and sheath, or possibly the dilator, I don't remember. Ideally, you'd like to see the wire contact three walls of the gastric lumen. This adds one more layer of certainty that you're in the correct position before you begin to serially dilate the tract and place the peel away sheath. Honestly, I would have liked to have had a bit more wire purchase on this case. Here is a slow motion video clip of me pulling back the gastrostomy tube after I've placed it through the peel away, removed the sheath, and inflated the balloon with sterile water. In this procedure, the peel away was 20 French, which is able to easily accommodate a 16 French gastrostomy tube. In the video, you kind of have to look closely, but you should be able to see the gastrostomy tube balloon getting pulled back against the wall of the stomach. Another video of me pulling back on the gastrostomy tube before I've secured the disc down to the skin. You should be able to see the balloon between the two T-tacks. This is my last procedure clip and I'll play it first at slow speed and then replay it in real time. I'm injecting contrast to the new G-tube. Contrast fills the gastric lumen. You can see rugal folds. You can see contrast outlining the G-tube balloon. We've taken a lot of pictures and done a lot of things to confirm we're in the stomach lumen. This case was straightforward, but you will run into cases where things are not so clear. And that's why, in my opinion, this is the most important shot you can get clearly documenting appropriate position of the gastrostomy tube. Here is a brief summary of the patient's postoperative care. Before discharge, we have our patients meet with a nutritionist who will see these patients and family before they leave us. We are lucky to have a flexible nutrition staff who will accommodate our patients, even though we, the IR team, are not great about giving nutrition much of an advance notice on these patients. This patient was sent back to recovery in stable condition. She continued to do well during our postoperative stay and was discharged home in good condition at 4 p.m. I used to keep these patients overnight, but in the last few years, we have moved to a same-day discharge for our routine and uncomplicated G-tube patients, and this has worked out well for our practice. That will bring our video to a close. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you'd like to give us some feedback, let us know in the comments section below, or if you'd prefer to remain under the radar, email me at chrisbeck2 at backtable.com. Thanks again for watching.